First, I'd like to start off by asking if anybody would like to share anything personal. Come up and say what they would like, whatever they would like to say. Miracles, transformations, prayers, life changes. Anybody like to come up and share with us? Come on, Kurt. There's so much in my heart to say. You'll probably have to stop me. <laughs> but, um, you know, normally uh, when the Hilda meetings come around and I'm asked to speak, Hilda started dosing me days in advance. And the last few times I was asked to speak, um, the people who asked me to st speak actually forgot. And so it was really interesting because there was one time where I was supposed to do it, and then I was waiting for Hilda all week, and she never came. So I was like, where are you, Hilda? You're supposed to tell me what to say. And she didn't come, so I, I pulled out um, Saints Alive, and I started reading it, thinking I knew everything and heard everything, and oh my God. There was so much I didn't remember, never knew that I knew. I think the most amazing thing was the whole story about her relationship with Jesus and how he said to her, I want all of your time. And she said, yes. And then she found out what that meant, but she had to give him all her time. And that was pretty extraordinary. Um, and then another time I was supposed to speak and it didn't happen. And, um, but I was downloaded with so much energy. I said, what is this? I wasn't supposed to, I didn't get to speak, and yet there's all this here to come through. And a few days later, I went to a, um, uh, an expo, with a, a, vi a vegan expo with a great holy man. And so I went up to talk to him, and he wasn't really very receptive. He seemed like he... Didn't, you know, I couldn't engage him in conversation, but then he invited me to have lunch with him, so I had this private lunch with him, where he still wasn't talking, no matter what I tried to say, and so I said, well, okay, and then the next thing I know, he decided he was going to have a big meeting, he, he, he did this sort of spontaneously big meeting, called all these people around, called me up on the stage, robed me, and made me speak Hilda's truth. And basically what I was given, and, and today as I was lying on the acupuncturist table, <laughs> I could feel Hilda coming to me and saying, you say that. Say that which you were given then. And what, sh what I was given then was that this is the time of the crucible. When we're, you know, the crucible is what they make gold with and the gold gets refined. And this is that time. It's so powerful. Everybody's issues are coming up in spades. Anything, everything that we feel about anything, it, it's to push us now to manifest our holy Christ self. To become the rainbow warriors of light, like Hilda always said. She did warn us that this was going to be a tough time. And, I, you know, she'd say that and I wouldn't listen. <laughs> I would say, no, it's the new age. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Well, yeah, it is pretty wonderful if you live her teachings and do what she says. And you know the truth that she lived. And you constantly do your sadhana, do your prayer, be the rainbow warrior. You never give up. You, man, you just know God is in control wherever we are. <laughs> I was thinking too today how Hilda always said, believe in a miracle. But you know around Hilda, you didn't have to believe in a miracle. You saw them happening so much. And I know everybody could tell stories of how they're still happening. And I feel like they're still happening to me. You know, um, every week, there's at least several times during the week when I'm leading a meditation or a teleconference call, and at one point somebody asked me about them because people get healed or something, and then, and, and, and I talk about Hilda. And they said, well, oh, we would love to hear more about this Hilda. And I said, well, anytime you hear me 
lead a meditation. That's Hilda. I know she's with me. I know she'll never leave me. I know she was probably the greatest gift of my life. And she keeps me going, no matter what. This year on Mangura Purnima, I, did, I decided to, to post on Facebook, which is now like my spiritual diary, um, uh, a letter of gratitude and thanks to all my gurus. And I went through a whole list of them. And it was just, you know, it was amazing, you know? And then this friend of mine said, oh my God, you should write a book, and da, da, da. I said, yeah, you know. And then the next day I was thinking about it and realized I missed 40 other ones. <laughs> and I said, oh wow, I'm really Hilda's child. I don't even know how many gurus Hilda knew. I'm sure it's more than I'll ever know, but through her grace I'm constantly meeting new ones and constantly met so many and just have been born into this amazing world of the truth, of light, of the community of saints on this earth that are living the truth every day so deeply, so profoundly. I really feel that this time we're asked to step up and do our prayers and oh, for all the things that seem to be um, the problem. I've been really praying for the waters of the earth, especially the Pacific. And this, I saw one of my uh, health practitioners today, and he told me anytime anybody comes from California, radiation comes up. So, he said, not here, not, <laughs> so far on the East Coast, we're lucky it hasn't spread, but I think that's something to pray for, and it's one of my things that I pray for daily, for the waters of the world, so I'd like to do a great ohm for the water for the waters, the water element, the water devas, right now, as Hilda would do. So please join me. Oh. so wonderful. Now, the secret of Kurt, which he rarely ever says, he was once upon a time some officer in the Sai Center, Sai, Sai, Sai Baba Center, and around that time, just uh, at, toward the end of his officership or right after, he had a dream. Can I tell this dream? <laughs> and in the dream, Sai Baba said, hold out your hand, and he manifest, and Kurt, as Kurt, Sai Baba and Kurt, or God and Kurt, manifested the booty. But when he woke up, it was on his hand, in actuality. Was that, is that what happened? No. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't a dream. I was awake. I had been very ill, and I couldn't go any, to any meetings. I was an officer. I was supposed to 
do 60% of the meetings. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go to any of my meetings anywhere. And it was really devastating. And I didn't know what to do, and I felt really bad. I wasn't honoring my commitment as a um, Sai Baba officer. So um, I sent a letter to, to Baba because Victor Blue was going off to be in India with Baba. I gave him a letter, and I said, Baba, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to step down as an officer? I just want to help spread the light. And so I gave the letter, and then a month later, Victor came back. And so I said, oh, Victor. And I, at that time, I was staying with Jed, and Victor was staying over when he first came in. And so, you know, he's, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, or what happened in the ashram and with Baba. And um, he started to tell me the story about how he didn't have an interview. But one night in his room, the booty appeared on his photo. And then as he was saying that, and he later told me this, he started to doubt this, that the Vibhuti had actually come. And uh, I sort of looked down at my hand and I saw this white stuff on my fingers. And I'm like, oh, what's this soap I didn't wash off? What, what is this? And I smelled it I'm like, oh my God, the, the, the holy ash is coming right now on my hand. And we were all very excited and uh, it, was, it, it was phenomenal. And then um, I didn't know what to do with my hand. I'm walking around the house, holding my hand, going, do I leave it on my altar or what do I do? And uh, Jen came home at that point and I said, Jed, look, and I told him and he said, this is the medicine that Bob is giving you for your healing because you've been very ill. And I said, oh, <laughs> you must be right. Well, I couldn't think. I was in this state because the, the holy ash gave you this vib vibration that was like <laughs> And so, okay, I lifted it off, li licked it off, and then later on, we were talking about Baba and we watched more come on my hand. It was really extraordinary. For the next couple of days, I kept having this, this ongoing teaching from Sai Baba with the holy ash. I think Hilda was away in India at the time. I was getting this me message from Baba that Oh, I know what it was. I went to this church that I was a part of, the Ascended Master Church, and I was very concerned about them. They were a very ungrounded activity, needless to say, but they were wonderful. And I didn't know if I should continue with them, and then I went to this meeting, and then all, there were signs that were given that showed me I was supposed to be part of the church, Baba wanted me there, and um, I had kept thinking that my hand, when it was happening that my hands were anointed, and these were like Baba's etheric fires from the, the, holy, the holy ash in the air. <laughs> and uh, and um, so these, these were some of the things that came out during that meeting. And I knew, wow, Baba wants me here. And as a result of my being there and eventually leading that church, then people came to Baba as a result. And then the next day, I was thinking about this again, started smelling the holy ash again, though it didn't appear. And I got the message from Baba that I should share this message. And Hilda wasn't there that night, it was Thursday, and I'm like, where can I go? And I was like, oh, this is the main Sai Baba meeting. Because the, you know, the main Sai Baba meeting was always looking down those things to say, oh, because we had Hilda's Sai Baba meeting, and, and they were like, you're not really going there for Baba, you're going there for Hilda. And, you know, they were kind of putting us down a lot. So, anyway, but I knew I had to go. I said, this is the place to go and give this message. So I went there. Because part of what people were saying to me was that part of the reason why you're ill is because you're going to too many groups, you're mixing too many vibrations, and all this stuff. What I received from Baba was that, that morning was that God was everywhere, the teaching was everywhere, I could go wherever my heart wanted me to go. And so... I got to the Sai Baba meeting, and uh, before the sharing time, I started thinking about this. I knew that Baba would answer me. I never doubted that. I knew I would probably not get a letter, but I would get an answer. That I was sure of. I realized that Baba sent the holy ash on the fingers that held the pen that wrote the, my letter to him. And that was, so this, so I knew, oh, this is it, that he was giving me this, 
Yeah, and he anointed my fingers. Yes, this is it. So I got up and shared about how Baba was telling me it was okay. Go to all these groups and do these things. Do whatever your heart wants. Go where your heart needs. And then there was a very mixed reaction. <laughs> Needless to say, but some people, you know, sort of came up to me on the side and said, well, you know, I, I work with the Violet Fire, and I go to Yogananda, and I go to the Buddhist, and I go to this, and I go to that. <laughs> that was basically that story, and I was awake. It was no dream. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for correcting me. That's, that's Kurt. You think that God isn't with each one of us in his own and her own way? Absolutely working through each and every one of us in his and her own way. Kurt's been a long time uh, devotee of Hilda's and devotee of God's, but along the way he also became, got very close to Amaji and others and uh, remains a dedicated instrument of God's love. <laughs>